Hello, my name is Gabe Dragicevich. I'm with the Fleet Readiness Center Southwest here in San Diego, California. Um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about 3D printing or additive manufacturing. Uh, we have three different systems here that we employ in uh, doing that result. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about first is the sterile lithography, that's SLA system. Uh, this system uses a photopolymer, basically a liquid, that's cured by a laser light source acting as the UV light source. In this particular situation, I have a part that we call our X47B hook point. That is a uh, UAV that the Navy is going to be using here in the near future. Uh, this particular project was presented to us by um, the FST. Uh, they had a problem with the original design that Northrop provided. Northrop had given them feedback that it would be quite a few months, if not a year, to redesign and reinstitute or implement this new design. Uh, they then gave it to us to look at. We went ahead and produced one. This is the actual part that came off the machine. It started out as liquid. It's now hard solid. Um, we did it to prove out the design uh, or the redesign, in fact, and before we went to machine uh, one out of metal. This was sent back to um, uh, Pax River, which did the testing there. They fit tested on the aircraft, found that there were some issues, came back, did a design change. Within a couple of days, we were able to make another one with a new design and, in fact, get approval to proceed in manufacturing, making one out of metal. At that point, we got the 3D model, went to manufacturing, produced one out of steel, that was delivered. Within five weeks, we were able to do the whole development cycle and the machining cycle to deliver the part for testing uh, back east. So a huge success employing 3D technology, not just the additive manufacturing, but the 3D data link between a 3D model, manufacturing, and the additive manufacturing, the 3D printer. Another case, we also use uh, one of our systems called FDM. That's fused deposition modeling. Now think of that one as a computerized glue gun. It basically has a nozzle, squirts out material, the material is hardened layer by layer, and all of additive manufacturing machines work on the same principles. You have layers that are built up to produce the model. In this case, we have a situation where we were building what we call a form block. This particular block, if you, if you could see clearly or closely, is layers and layers of material that's been laid down. The important thing in here is that we're not producing a part, we're producing the tool to make the part. In this case, we have a flat pattern that was cut out of our laser profiling machine. It could be done on a milling machine or whatever. And this is then used as a tool. There's pins that we insert into the tool. We can then bend the sheet metal over the edge and essentially use this material, this, this 3D printed part, as now a form block or a form tool. This typically would be done either out of aluminum. In older days, it was done out of wood or some other uh, artificial material. Uh, it would take days, if not weeks, to do that. We were able to print this up overnight, make the part, test it out by going to the aircraft and doing a fit check. If there were any iterations that we had to do again after that, we're only 24 hours away from doing it again. Traditionally, this would take anywhere from six to eight months to do one to two or three iterations because in every time, if we didn't have enough material, we had to go back to the supply chain, order another piece of material, which could take weeks, if not months. Uh, in this case, we're able to build this up overnight, literally potentially doing 100 iterations in a year. So uh, huge success. In fact, the FDM system is our workhorse. And we also have these similar machines installed both at Cherry Point and at Jacksonville. So if for whatever my, my machine happens to be down or happens to be full of work, we're able to send that 3D model via uh, PLM, a product lifecycle management system, connect our FRCs via an enterprise-wide connectivity and share the data so that we could produce this part overnight across the country. The goal eventually, obviously, is to be able to make this part anywhere we need the part deployed, uh, potentially on a ship. So. Uh, the third system that we have here in-house is called SLS, that's Selective Laser Sintering. The thing that's unique about this system is that it has powdered material in it that is fused together by laser. So the laser actually melts it or sinters the powder together. Uh, again, layered technology. In this case, I'm, I'm holding an ECS duct. This is an environmental control system duct out of a Super Hornet. That's an F-18 ENF. This particular part happens to be one of the few parts in the entire DOD, entire industry, that's actually approved for flight. Uh, it's nylon material. Uh, there's obviously flame and fire retardant requirements. 
So of the other machines, this is one of the few machines that has a flight approved part. We do have it here at the base. Uh, it is part right now, this part is part of the supply chain through the Boeing FIRST program, which is twilighting. Uh, we are in discussions with Boeing through a commercial service agreement to allow the FRC to be an approved source to make this part going forward because we have the same material and we have the same uh, machine. Okay, so one of the points that we want to get to, obviously, is to this right here, which is the metal parts. Uh, there's a lot of benefits, obviously, because we would be able to print up the parts and ultimately leads to cost savings. We're able to provide the fleet a part quicker, obviously, and uh, with a lot less waste in material. To machine this typically takes a larger block of material that we machine down. There's a lot of time involved in machining the material down, and there's also the cost, the significant cost of a big block of material. In building it up, there's just the cost of the material you actually use. So there could be a day where we actually walk onto the USS Enterprise and we step up to a box and say, you know, Scotty, give me this part, and it appears. Thank you for your time.